94.5 PST. Did you miss anything with Chris, Joe, and Gianna on Chris and the Crew? Catch up now. This is Chris and the Crew on Demand, sponsored by Trinity Rehab. Schedule an appointment now at trinity-rehab.com. All right, you got to remember back. What was the worst thing you ever got for trick-or-treating? It's Chris. Joe, Joseph. we'll do a little roll call in the morning here. Gianna. Gianna. Gianna's the one that's mad about this. I am furious. I uh, was with, like, family, and my my boyfriend has a niece, a new niece, and she's, like, one year old. And we took her to this trunk or treat, and somebody gave her a pen. <laughs> I was like, a pen? <laughs> a pen? And, Wait. like... So let me open what the phone. 609-243-9778. You got to call us and tell us what is the worst thing you ever got when you were trick or treating. I'm like this this little girl it can barely even eat candy. She could just like lick it. Was and it a Halloween pen? No, it was just a pen for some company that they were trying to promote. I was like, "Hello, oh. we don't we don't so want to pen." They were using it a, a child's trick or trunk or treat as a marketing event and not just your kid have some candy. I was like, please. Wait, did they give candy along no, with the pen? Just the pen. Oh, no. I was like, what is Also, as someone in the, I, one of my jobs in this building is occasionally ordering that stuff for us, like, and I'm aware of it. Promotional pens are more expensive than buying a bag of candy. That's I can assure you of that. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm trying to think. Well, I remember there was one time where um, my daughter Bailey came home, you know, you dump your bag on the living room floor, and she was like, what is that? It was a little miniature book of crossword puzzles. See, that's so lame. Okay. That is so lame. I didn't think she knew what it was. She was like, well, what is this? You do, Can you eat it? You do occasionally <laughs> also get Bibles. Have you Bibles? ever gotten a Bible? No. A little pocket Bible? Oh, yeah. What? There was a house in the neighborhood. Now, listen, all for your religious beliefs, but I didn't need a Bible. If I'm staying trick-or-treat, no. you don't need to give a kid a Bible. If you have pens, I didn't know I could read it. Before. That's pretty bad. Yeah. If you have pens or a Bible, just shut your porch light off because <laughs> nobody wants to come there. Let's go to the phones. Michelle and Trevos is on the line. Hey, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, um, to go along with Joe, yes, I have gotten things in my kids' bags that was from Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes. Okay, so religious materials, yeah. Which I'm like, no, stay away from the holidays. Just shut your door, yeah. I think the worst thing that I ever got when I was little, and sometimes, I like, every time my kids go out, I hope they don't get it. People used to give, back in the 80s, they used to give bags of pennies. Oh, I've gotten pennies. Nope, I've gotten them. It's yep. the worst. <laughs> yep, I used to get a roll of pennies, and I remember that we would get so mad because they would weigh our bags down because they were heavy. Oh, I've Who? gotten them. I forgot about that. Who the hell wants a penny? Well, no, but as a kid, at first you're like, oh, money. But then it's but then you realize you got like ten cents. cents yeah, okay. yeah, and it's a pain for a parent because now it's all the kids thinking about is their right. ten cents. And you know they they come in rolls. Yeah. I used to get a roll of. Like pennies or dimes or something. This may be like the hypochondriac of me too, but is it like that's like a choking hazard too? Like, what if your kid's like really little well, and now I'm, they have a bunch of pennies sitting I was in a there? Older, I knew yeah. not to eat pennies. Right, but like some little kids <laughs> don't. Some well, little kids don't. Wait, what else did your little niece get in her bag? Well, it was a lot of candy and then a pen and then a pack of Pringles, which I did not understand. Oh, wait, wait, wait! A trick or treat snack. I was gonna say I have to defend the Pringles because. We always used to do, like, get if we got a bag of chips or something, that would be kind of the snack while you're trick-or-treating. We would actually open that, pop that can okay. open, and eat while we were going. While, That's actually appreciated, I think. While I respect that, I feel like it needs to be, like, the bat-shaped pretzels or the oh, a spooky theme? shaped. Like, it needs to be a Halloween theme. Maybe chips. I, I, don't, I don't love the whole chip thing. I, I never liked getting... What seemed like they were just reaching in their candy jar at home, like the Werther's candies and stuff like yeah. that. Like, don't give me that. <laughs> Disgusting. Me that. Disgusting. All right, so what was the worst thing you ever got when you were trick-or-treating? Huh? We're kind of reminiscing about our Halloweens of the past. Where, yeah, I would get a roll of pennies, just like that listener said. And it would I would be <laughs> pissed because it would weigh our bags down. Mm-hmm. That's true. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this thing's so heavy. That makes sense.
Ugh, Gianna had a hot take though when she said that the chips weren't a good uh, weren't a good trick or treat mm, snack, and I, I got a little bothered by her from that because that was the only thing we were allowed to open because it was sealed. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was that snacky. Because then our parents wouldn't have to mm-hmm. bring along snacks because we were out for like five hours. Well, you know I, what I mean. I would rather just munch on the actual like individually wrapped. Candy. And what it, so your niece got a, a legit pen a and leg- a trunk or treat over the weekend? She's one. <laughs> and she got a pen. Like, what is she going to... What is any... Uh, well, maybe they thought, what's a one-year-old actually eating? You know, like candy-wise. No, every kid, though, got just a pen. Not even a singular Kit Kat. We've got Natalie in Bordentown on the line. I'm dying to hear what she has to say. Hey, Natalie. Hi. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. So what did you get? Okay, so... I was about like 10 or 11 years old, and there was me and three other of my friends out trick-or-treating, and there was a lady sitting on our porch, and no joke, we got toast like, in the shape of triangles. Toast? Toast. Wait. Toast. No, no, no jelly, no, no butter, no nothing. It was toast. And the four of us got down on the steps. And we, we were comparing our toast, like looking at it. And one of my friends goes to the lady, is this toast? And she goes, yeah. And we were like, oh, my God, she's going to poison us with toast. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even understand. I, at first, I thought it's the Charlie Brown thing, but that's Thanksgiving where they get yeah. the toast, right? Yeah. The Charlie yeah. Brown Thanksgiving? Was, yes. Yes. It was triangular toast. Is that a witch <laughs> symbol? Natalie, but that is Natalie, amazing. I mean, like, because, right, like, I understand if you can't afford candy, but the idea of, the uh, bread's pretty expensive, uh, buying that much bread for trick-or-treaters, again, equates probably to the cost of a five-cent bazooka candy. I don't oh my understand God. what the symbol of the toast is. That just is sent me. <laughs> oh, that just sent me. Like, that, why would you do that? I think that's one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Sitting out on her porch, did she have the thing, like, on, a, yeah, on was, an extender <laughs> cord Like, outside? how big was her toaster? I mean, oh I, like, some of those eight-slice toasters, uh, That I, I've never seen one that's more than eight. Eight, that right? might win the prize. <laughs> that is so That amazing. might win the crew prize. Could you oh, imagine man. if a two-year-old walks up and gets a piece of <laughs> toast? put some peanut butter on it Poor or kids something. Just like have, a bar, on it. have like a little bar a of bar like... For uh, no, no, no. Like <laughs> spreads, your peanut butter, your jelly, your butters, your... You know. <laughs> that's bizarre. Oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> Sue and Hamilton said one time she got an apple. Oh, yeah. We always got those. That was another thing that weighed your bag down. That's expensive, though, to be handing out and apples. Nobody wants good stuff on Halloween, either. Ro- Robin Bridgewater said, uh, one time got the travel toothbrush and floss. <laughs> like, if what is going you knew, on? You knew you were coming up with, like, a dentist's house, I, I feel like, if that was say. the case, right? It's so mm-hmm. true. Is that mm-hmm. a dentist's house? I remember one time when I was younger, I got, like, a beanie hat. A hat? Like, a hat. <laughs> was it cold out that Halloween? Yeah, I remember. I mean, I'm sure it was like but how chilly. How many hats did they have to give out? My friends and I all got matching beanies. No, yeah, it, was, it was something. It was something. stick to the Milky Ways, <laughs> Drag Race. Oh, jeez, that was our Joe <laughs> competing. It was <laughs> two years in a row now. You got to go see the video. It's up on the 94.5 PST Instagram story right now. I loved the silver glitter dress. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good touch this year, and, and I had these I had these uh, glittery silver heels you this year. You did kind of wuss out a little bit because Miss Pumpkin said you can't get those chunky heels, and you did. Uh, Miss Pumpkin actually stilettos. said I did quite well okay. considering that. Uh, by right. the way, I love Miss Pumpkin. She celebrated 20 years yesterday. Uh, she just fills me with so much joy. So tell us about yesterday. Uh, yesterday was so much fun. I do love the town of New Hope and all the community and the way everyone comes out. Yesterday was a ton of fun. Uh, I did pretty well. A ton of people. I mean, the weather was stunning. I mean, I, we literally got the last spot in town on the street. Like, when we got into town, it was so busy yesterday. The last spot in town. Um, but it's just a stunning day. Uh, I said I did pretty good this year. Okay, so tell everybody what the race. Yeah, if you if you if you don't know it, uh, now in tw- for twenty years, you're you're presented a pumpkin. Uh, there were fifteen registered participants this year, so fifteen of us. You had to be wearing drag and high heels, a so minimum of in. three inch heel. Tell me what you were wearing. I was wearing a, a silvery rainbowy like a, cocktail dress. Like a glitter dress. It was spaghetti straps. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't shave my legs. I had stockings, no. but the last second, I well, I'm you know whatever. I wasn't gonna fully. Did you have a full face of makeup? Yeah, like Jared, uh, my 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 boyfriend did some makeup for me and stuff. Okay. Uh, and in fact, my makeup was so good that my friend uh, Diva Divine didn't even recognize me. She was asking for me all day. She was all over you when she was and, here. And I love Diva, and she didn't recognize oh me. Nor, nor did our friend Melissa. What? Uh, neither of them recognized me. They're like, oh, it's you. At the end of the day, almost. Oh my god. Um, so you. Run uphill, carrying this pumpkin. You get to the top, you make it a jack-o'-lantern with a marker, and then you run downhill. Now, the real trick is running Ooh. downhill, right? Because yeah, true. all heel, it's got to be all toe first, never never heels. Did you um, stay on your feet? I never fell. I never even took a tumble once, and Good. I didn't finish in last place. So there were 15 people in the race. About 15, yeah. What, what did you play uh, top three? I would say, I, no, well, no. top three in my heart, you know. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> It's Can't Beat Chris. Can't Beat Chris on 94.5 PST. All right. Two days is Chris Rollins winning streak because the game is called Can't Beat Chris. But we'll see if we can beat her today. So we go to the phones and we go to Elkins Park. Good morning, PST. Who is this? Good morning. It's Ramona. Good morning, Ramona. Wait, who do you have with you, Ramona? Um, I'm Alessio. It's my son. Hey, Alessio. He's been trying for weeks to get on on the show. All oh, right, that's so great. I'm glad you guys are here. So a nice uh, a nice duo in the car there, Chris Rollins. You'll make your way out to the studio door to my left. Goodbye, Chrissy. Goodbye. Uh, we're gonna ask our talented car there in Elkins Park uh, three questions. We'll see who gets more right when Chris Rollins comes back. She will not hear your answers. Are you guys ready? We're ready. All right, your quiz starts now. It's Bill Gates's birthday today. What major company is Bill Gates the CEO of? Wait, isn't it like Amazon? Or is no. It, wait, or is it Apple? No. Go ahead. Uh, you got five seconds left. Go ahead. Um, Amazon, lock it in. <laughs> All right, we'll lock it in Amazon. We're going to move on to the next question. Second question. Selena Gomez was showing off her couple's costume with Benny Blanco this weekend. She stars in a show alongside Martin Short and Steve Martin. The show is on Hulu. Ooh. Name that show. Only Martin's in the building. You want to lock it in? Yes. All right. Third and final question. There are only three days until Halloween. What famous actor plays Beetlejuice? Keaton. Michael Keaton. You want to lock in Michael Keaton? Lock it in. Let's do it. We're going to call Chris back into the room. Can't be Chris powered by Legoland Discovery Center, Philadelphia. Jump into a world of creativity, color, and playful learning. Info and tickets at philadelphia.legolanddiscoverycenter.com. All right, Chris. Hey there. Christine, the three questions are locked in for our duo in the car. They're coming at you now. Yeah, they're, they're like, you know. Nobody in the office wants to play with you. They have, you're yeah, no. they have the power of two. You're not allowed to have car. a team. You're not allowed to have a team. Your name is on the show. That's right. how it goes. Give it to me. <laughs> Here Give we it go. To me. First question for Chris Rollins starts now. It's Bill Gates' birthday. What major company is the, the CEO of? Oh, um, Bill Gates is Microsoft. So Chris said Microsoft. Ramona said Amazon. Microsoft is correct. Yeah. Got that one. Okay. So far. So we'll far. see how this goes. Second question. Selena Gomez and Benny Blanco were showing off their couple's costume over the weekend. <laughs> Selena stars in a show alongside Martin Short and Steve Martin on Hulu. Go ahead and name that show Chris Rollins. Am I going to get the whole title right? It's like um, Murders in the Building. Only Murders in the Building, I think, right? You both said Only Murders in the Building, and you're both correct. Okay. All right. Chris, two. Our Elkins Park duo won. We'll see how this ends on question three here. There are only three days until Halloween, Chris. What famous actor plays Beetlejuice? Um, um, Michael Keaton. You both said Michael Keaton, and you're both correct, which means, unfortunately, Chris has won today. Oh, I hate that. I hate this. No, oh, we tried, though. Gee, thanks, guys. Gave it a good effort. Uh, for, no, for- you guys did good. For playing along, we got a twenty dollars worth of New Jersey lottery scratch offs for those in the car that are of age. The New Jersey lottery, anything can happen in Jersey. Hang line. Listen tomorrow morning at seven forty for another chance to beat Chris on ninety four point five PST.
It's Chris and the Cruise Daily Scoop. So we were just talking about Selena Gomez and Betty Blanco and their couple's costume during Campy. Chris, you can see it. They were Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter. It's up on the 94.5 PST Instagram story. I gotta be honest, they look so good. And you he know, is like perfect as the Mad Hatter. This is the time of year where I wish I had Selena Gomez and Betty Blanco money because they look so good. I wonder what party they went to. I haven't really heard of any of the major parties. I was trying to figure out where they were. I actually I couldn't have, find out. I don't obviously, I don't know where they were either, but Alex Earl, she's an influencer. She threw a party in LA and her costume, she did, the, it was Alice in Wonderland themed, which makes me think maybe I wonder they, were if there, they were there. Because Alex Earl did the Cheshire Cat and she looked so good. That was a good investigation. I think, if, I I think if that might be there. it. So, do you guys know that today is the first anniversary of Matthew Perry's death? It's crazy. It's it crazy. been a year. The house where he died was just sold for $8.5 million. There was no way his mom was holding on to that. That's too painful. It's insane. So, this may be so cool to me because I'm a twin, but did you notice identical twins played each other in yesterday's Eagles-Bengals game? It no. was Sidney Brown from the Eagles. Oh. He's a safety. And his identical twin brother, Chase, is on the Bengals. He's a running back. I did not know that. Yeah. And apparently they're super close. So the week before the game, like Tuesday, they usually talk daily. They said, okay, we're not going to talk till after the game. Now we're going to get in the zone. That's funny, actually. <laughs> so I didn't talk from Tuesday until probably like, you know, today. They'll that talk is funny. again. Is that nuts? And I haven't told you a good lottery story in a while. So this guy in North Carolina found found a $20 bill on the ground. So he said, you know what? I'm going to buy some lottery tickets. Won a million dollars. Good for him. A million dollars. Insanity. Why don't these things happen to us? I know. Never does, though. All right, there's the scoop. Here's what's coming up with Chris and the crew. All right, just after 8 o'clock, we'll have that first Sabrina wish list item for you. Still trying to give you a Sabrina Carpenter shopping spree on Amazon. 2500 bucks. I mean, that could be all your holiday shopping. Or let's be honest, if you were Joe, you'd buy everything for yourself. Uh, if it starts, uh, the holidays start at home. <laughs> so 8, noon, and 4, we're going to give you her wish list items. That's what you got to enter in the 94.5 PST app. And then you can make your own wish list if you win. And go ahead and shop. Sponsored locally by Sioka Volkswagen of Flemington. So make sure you're listening just after 8. We'll give you that first one of the day. Chris and the crew. 94.5 PST. Throwback. It's Chris and the crew's throwback live at 8.05. All right, I'm going to beat Joe. <laughs> she said confidently <laughs> right into the for real. Right into the game show. All right, what's the theme for today, Gianna? So um, these are the top songs on Halloween playlists. Oh, easy. But... They're more. They're all pop songs. Like yeah. we're not hearing Monster Mash. Oh, we're not. Yes. And then we're also just gonna kind of. I kind of want to know your thoughts too. Like, do these belong on Halloween playlists? All right. Or are they kind of a stretch? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm are. gonna do good at this. Oh, here we go. Okay. This is the first one. Name uh, your buzzer. Just either artist or song title. Okay. Here we go. What the heck is this? Why don't you run for me? What are you Joe. Chris? Okay, Chris, beat me. Go ahead, Chris. Is, <laughs> it, is, it, is that Billie Eilish? It is Billie Eilish. Okay. It's Billie Eilish, bury a friend. She now, said name or artist. She did say so. name or artist. Yeah. It. Mm-hmm. Do we think that is a good Halloween no. song? No. Yes. No. You know, you think so, Got spooky vibes to it. <laughs> and burying. Nah. Billie Eilish is all spooky vibes. <laughs> well, Billie, Billie Eilish, Eilish is, is pretty good at Halloween. She's... She's just a dark artist. Yeah, she I does. Think, no, that's silly. No All Halloween. Right. So Chris says no Halloween. Joe says yes. You got I, lucky I on know. that one, Chris. I did. did. Just because I knew it was Billie Eilish. All right, here's the next one. Name's your buzzer. Okay. Song title or artist. <laughs> well, I'm Joe. Okay. That's my buzzer. Uh, and it, the song is I Want Candy. I was going to say. That's uh, correct. But is it? The Carter? Is it Aaron Carter? No, so there's a few different versions. Okay. I was like, Aaron Carter like it. did a version of that? Right. Aaron Carter did do a version of that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that is not. That's the what? Bow Wow version or something. Oh, okay. That yeah. is n- that is also not a Halloween song. P- 
people think because it's candy. I kind of think that it's a Halloween song. You literally knock on doors and say, I want candy. That doesn't make it a Halloween song. I think that one fits. Oh. Very a friend, I do not think fits, but I think that one fits. Nah. No? I want candy almost reminds me of summertime. I don't know why I'm saying that, but it almost <laughs> does. Anyway, okay. It's a candy haul. So we're tied. We're tied. Everybody's tied up. All right, this is the last one of this round. Name's your buzzer. Joe, that is Rihanna Disturbia. That is correct. Because I was waiting for Disturbia in this round. Just because it's called Disturbia also does not make it a Halloween song. Now, I will agree with you. I don't find that to be a Halloween no. song, but I know it's on every list, so I was waiting for it to come up here. It None is of those on every are Halloween songs for me. I guess I like more the traditional. You know me. I'm a little more traditional. Like Monster Mash, Ghostbusters yeah. and stuff. But these are like pop songs that are have been named some of the best pop songs that are Halloween vibes. So, yeah. So, Chris Rowland, you lost her one, girl. Blah, blah, blah. You All did. Right, so, Joe, Go. we're doing Throwback Live at 8.05. Round two here. So, Joe actually, yeah, did beat me round one. Because I'm a smart fella. Mm, so, uh. he is taking on Gianna round two. So, we're doing the top songs that have made Halloween playlists. Which I didn't think any of those songs were Halloween ish. But I'm anyway. Chris Rowland, I deliver it to. Well, the first, okay. Anyway, here we go. Round two. So you made them now. I made them up. Your name is your buzzer. How about this one? Gianna. Go ahead, Gianna. It's Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire. Obviously. Now, just because it has vampire in it, is that a Halloween? I do not think so. so but you thought the other ones were? Some of them just have Billie more. Billie Eilish? Billie Eilish. Come on. Eh. Yeah. That's a, it's spookier though. Like that Olivia Rodrigo song has no spooky vibes. It's just called Vampire. All right. I, it's true. I, it's I, I like, agree with you. But she says you sucked your teeth into me. That's the redeeming trait of that song. True. Right. Well, early lead for Gianna. Gianna won, Joe. <laughs> Here we go. Song number two. Why do I always feel like I'm in the twilight? Well, <laughs> I'll give you both the artist and the song title. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. You have to say Joe. My name is Joe. Okay. I have to say and all that. the artist okay. is Rockwell, and I bet you didn't think I knew that. I didn't think you knew that. I wanted to say Maxwell, but it's Rockwell. <laughs> uh, and the song is Somebody Watch. I, feel, I think it's in parentheses, I always feel like, and then somebody's watching. I, I love think. that song. Getting love that so song? technical. I think. And I have to say, I do think we could get away with putting that on the Halloween playlist. I That's definitely. That's the first one this morning. No, see, I think everyone besides Vampire is, is fair mm. game. I do. All right. Tie score. Here we go. Tiebreaker. Next one. Okay. Gianna. <laughs> go ahead, Jay. Thriller, Michael Jackson. Yes. This ding, ding. obviously is hot. This is like the Halloween song. I had to put that in there because I'm feeling Halloween-ish. Oh, God. Can we just play the whole thing? I know it's long, but let's just play it here on 94.5. Would you ever live in a haunted house? If you knew that it was haunted, let's say you were looking for a house. They said, well, this one, <laughs> the stories. It's Chris, Joe, and Gianna. I have a feeling Gianna would. Actually, no. No, you wouldn't. No, not if it's really when haunted. When I grew up, so I grew up in a small town, Cranberry, New Jersey. You've heard me talk about it. It's the best place ever. <laughs> when we would go trick-or-treating, there were houses, Joe, in town, because it's an old historic town. Right. So there were houses that we knew were haunted. Mm -hmm. There was one on Prospect Street, the top of the hill. It's a big, old-looking house. And we'd get there on Halloween and be like, do we? Do we not? This is the thing. You know I love all things Halloween, all things, like, spooky. And I love going to, like, walk through haunted houses, things like that. But if it's really haunted, nah. And there's a restaurant in my, house, in my town, too, the Cranberry Inn. They've actually had those ghost hunters, you know, those teams of ghost hunters uh -huh. there. And it's proven that there's ghosts in there. It's scary. <laughs> That's why, like, you know places like Eastern State Penitentiary? Yeah. Like, I don't really know if I want to go through the haunted walkthroughs there because it just feels too real. Like, there's real stories. So if it was the perfect house, would you avoid it if there was a possibility of a ghost in it? I'd rather live in a dumpster. <laughs> wow. Oh my she God. loves Halloween so much. That is drastic. I know somebody who used to live with a ghost. I, the true story. It's like an extended family member. They used to have a ghost living in their house. What would the ghost do? Was it a friendly ghost? It like would flicker the lights and it would get mm. like annoyed and it would like push things around. It was, it, and then they would just yell at the ghost. They found out it's, I don't know the whole story about how they found out its name, but they knew its name and its background and they would yell at the ghost and then she would stop. 
Joe, no, you didn't answer. It's bizarre. I don't. That stuff doesn't care. bother you. It doesn't phase me. What? I get Joe? a little like if I sk- sit and get in my head, I get a little spooked. But I don't. I don't let myself get in my head on it because I know I'd be spooked. Could you imagine Joe in a haunted house? Do they offer like discounts? a real one? Do, is there a discount? Like, it's hey, there's a ghost in here. Have it for twenty percent off or something. I don't think it works, so. <laughs> It's Chris and the Crew's Daily Scoop. I don't know if you guys realize this, but today is the first anniversary of Matthew Perry's death. I can't believe it's been a year. Wow. That went really fast. The house where he died was just sold for eight and a half million dollars. His family wouldn't hold on to that. Insanity. That's tough. So Taylor had a special guest on stage with her Saturday night in New Orleans, Sabrina Carpenter. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. this duo. It was super cute. She grabbed his cell phone kind of like calling her to come on stage. So she came on stage. And it's funny because Sabrina is so much shorter than Taylor. They had her in these huge platform shoes so she could be almost to Taylor's height. Yeah, Sabrina always wears shoes like that. And to be honest, I feel that because we're the same height. So you have to catch up to everybody. I get it. I so get it. So Sabrina did. Um, now remember, Sabrina's been on stage. I mean, she opened for her for a while. Mm-hmm. She was in the, summer in the, 23, right? In the first for US a while. Way, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she did Espresso, which led into a mashup of Taylor's. Is it over now? She also did Please, Please, Please. So it was good. The crowd went nuts. That's awesome. Nuts. Selena Gomez and her boyfriend, Benny Blanco, did uh, a couple's costume thing over the weekend for a Halloween party. You got to see it. It's really cool. It's up on the 94.5 PST Instagram story. She's Alice in Wonderland, and he's the Mad Hatter from the Tim, Tim Burton, Burton version. live action yeah. version of Alice in Wonderland. They look really good. We were thinking they went to Alex Earl's Halloween party. Yes, yeah, she threw a, an Alex. It was Alex in Wonderland in L.A. It was a whole party. and Pretty cool. It might They might have been there. And KFC, this is so crazy. KFC has teamed up with the sleep company Hatch for a new white noise sound. The sound of chicken being fried. I think I love that. <laughs> I'm a here for that. A lot of people say that they think it sounds like rain. You know what I mean? So funny. I like it. All right, there's the scoop. Chris and the crew. 94.5 PST. It's 910, 94.5 PST, your number one hit music station. How would you like to be able to use your sick time for your sick pet? You know what? I'll, I bet you've already done this. It's Chris, Joe, you and to. Gianna. Well, because here's the thing. We don't really get this here in our office because we don't get separate sick days, vacation days, mm. personal days like some people do. Some people do. Right, right. We just have, we're just given a big bank of days mm-hmm. and we can use it however we wish. It's called PTO, personal time off. So nobody questions us, are we sick, are yeah, we yeah, this, yeah. are we that, or you know, whatever. But in places where sick time is a thing, sometimes you have to right. verify you're sick well, to and, pull from that bucket. Well, right. I know like my husband, when he uses a sick day, he... You need to be sick and like and bring a doctor's note on you. and stuff. Yeah, you have to be home. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. some strict. places are like that. So in New York City, there might be a law adopted that would let people take sick days to take care of their sick pet. I gotta be honest. Like, I guess I'm confused. What do people do when their kids are sick? Yeah, like you kind of... I mean, do you use sick days for that or do you use... You're not on a vacation. What, what other kind of day do you... Certainly not a vacation day. Yeah, that doesn't you're not care. taking... That's not time that you want to take. I feel like it's almost... It, it Not almost. It's worse caring for someone who's sick. Like if you're caring for a sick kid, then you just being sick on the... You know what I mean? Yeah, so this This new amendment would let anybody to use sick days to take care of their pet. Like right now, you can use them if like you or someone that you know, within your family is sick, okay? A human being. Right. The right. basic argument, though, is our pets, you know, pets are family. I totally believe that you should be able to take it for your pets. Yeah. It's just another family responsibility. You know, if you've got a cool boss, they might already allow this, but this would be written into New York City's bylaws, so companies would have to say that it's okay. I definitely think this should be a thing. Do you know how much work it is when your pet is sick? mm Sometimes yeah. how much Even money more than your family member? Yeah, because you have to watch their every move or whatever. Like if your dog has stitches or something, oh it's a lot of effort. It is a lot. Then the cone, they're running mm-hmm. into things. They're trying to bite the cone off. It's it's a pain. So I definitely think this should be. A uh, thing. I'm for it too. Chris and the crew, ninety four point five PST. 
This was Chris and the crew on demand. Sponsored by Trinity Rehab. Schedule an appointment now at trinity-rehab.com. Wake up with Chris and the crew. Weekdays 6 until 10 on your number one hit music station. 94.5 PST.